the series. 欢迎大家参加我们星期天晚上的呃专题演讲系列。那今天是 today is our monthly uh update on the COVID nineteen pandemic. 那今天是我们每个月一次的在这个新冠肺炎肺炎疫情的。报告的情况。那 today we have Dr. Chen Ning Wang to share with us to update us the the, the recent develop and on the、uh, treatment and also the the vaccines. 那今天我们是请到呃王春莲博士来跟我们谈谈这个新冠肺炎的疫情治疗及疫苗的最新发展。So I think、uh, people familiar with、uh, Dr. Wang. So I don't want to spend more time introduce himself. Him, that 大家对王博士应该都不陌生，所以我就不再介绍他。那我们就请王博士开始。You can share your screen now, Chen. Okay. Right. Can you hear me? Yes. Can hear. Okay. Let me share my screen. So, Pama, you should. Can you stop your screen sharing first? Maybe. Okay, let's see. You can just try and see if it works. I believe it works. Yeah. It's worked. Yeah, we we see your screen now. Okay. Go ahead. Hello. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Dr.、Uh, Master Yong, and、uh, and、uh, good evening, good morning, everyone. It's it's pleasure to be here again and to share with you some most recent update regarding the COVID-19. Again, first disclaimer: I'm not expert on this. I just do the best I can, and to gather a most. What I think is most important information to share with the community. Ah,、uh, 非常感谢金勇师啊，分、uh, 感谢咱们盛成有这个机会再回到这个咱们网上的平台，跟大家分享一下最近新冠最近的这些进展。啊、uh, ，就是首先我也想说一下，我不是这方面的专家，只是尽我所能就收集一些我觉得比较有用的信息跟大家分享一下。啊、uh,。And first, I always like to start. Can can you see my screen? I I see all always people are getting into the room. Okay.、Um, first of all, I like to always like to start with these slides. This is a dashboard、uh, about the COVID nineteen、uh, coming from the Johns Hopkins, and、uh, which they did an excellent job, widely、uh, referenced.、Uh, this is by early morning of today, and globally we have close to thirty three million cases. Uh, confirmed, and uh, uh, which is across a nine-month period of time only. And、uh, as last time I mentioned, if you look at and right down right to the corner, a lower right corner, and、uh, shows the daily cases, new cases、uh, reported, and start from the beginning of the pandemic. And last time、I、mentioned, and first million cases and take about close to four months. And now, average every day we have about three hundred, four hundred thousand cases. Take about two to three days and reach one million cases. And also by this morning,、uh, we have close to one million deaths already occurred and for the COVID nineteen.、Um, and and more importantly, also to be aware,、um, this、uh, as as、uh, this confirmed cases and also the death are just.、Um, An estimate, and we know it's underestimate because, and significant significant proportion of COVID nineteen, are asymptomatic or have only mild presentation. Also depends on the region where the testing of COVID nineteen has not become widely available. A number of cases and the cause the the death due to COVID nineteen also gro are grossly underestimated. Ah, in general, 简单说一下，这是。约翰霍普金斯大学的这个这个疫情的一个整理，大家就就是非常喜欢用这个。在今天截止到今天的早晨呢，全球大概就将近三三千三百万的这个呃这个确诊的病例。
然后呢，呃，这个呢是大概在九月的时间里面，从疫情到今年一月份到现在，大概是九月的时间。然后就像我上次谈到的，前面一百万的病例大概花了三到四个月的时间，而现在我们看一下右下角这个黄色的图，是报告每天的新的确诊的病例。我们现在每天就有三十万到四十万的确诊病例，所以，所以累计另外一个一百万的病例大概只需要两到三天，这就是 global 这个全球大流行的速度。然后到今天早上为止呢，我们现在大概有将近，啊一百万的死亡病例。然后呢，我们也知道，啊、呃，一个一个上人早好早期啲佛弟子嚟嘅，你知唔知啊？系北京生物咩咩大学专教授嚟嘅，唔知，嗯，哦唔系，毕业于大学清华大学咩研究乜乜乜。Sorry, is that is that question or? 再嚟到美國，響誒、呃，喂 ，hello， 呀、yeah, ，過嚟 ，is that question？is that question or？no no， 係 someone just unknown，ok，ok，ok，ok， 啊，剛才說到這個就是，嗯、呃，然後呢就說，呃，我們現在知道這個這個現在這個確診的病例和死亡的病例實際上也是這個。Underreported, because we know that this disease, a large part of the patient is not ill or ill. Then, many countries, many countries, the patient is not ill, so the death rate and the death rate are lower than the death rate of the patient. Okay, thank you. Then, I have a question for you. This one shows the, uh, the daily new confirmed cases are coming in. Sorry. This is daily new confirmed cases. Uh, start from beginning of the, the beginning of the pandemic until yesterday. This is by selected the country um, and, and shows at least the trend of the daily new cases. So two things I want to uh, mention here uh, compared to what I showed on this figure about two months ago, end of July. And the first tier country where the country got hit hardest by this pandemic still remain unchanged. India, Brazil, United States, which is unfortunate, still on the top. And one thing to note is different is Western European country here and showed and France, Spain, United Kingdom and Germany. And last time when I showed at the end of July and this country actually were on the right, basically on the right direction and they passed the first wave and really on the good trajectories coming down with regard to the newly confirmed cases. But then six days later, and you see in, in this country, and basically the, there's so-called another curve, second wave is coming. And in slight countries like a few listed here and currently reporting new, uh, newly confirmed cases already passed the first wave. This is that every day 这个确诊的病例数从一月份统计到现在，那么全世界在一个比较这个重要的国家的做一个做一个做一个汇总。然后这里面我想提两点，就是上次呢我在七月底做这个报告的时候也也也也也也显示了这个图。呃，第一点呢就是，那么在全球按现在这个确诊的每天确诊的病例数来讲，呃，影响就是病例数最多的几个国家，现在并没有变化，就在这个图的最上面。印度、巴西和这个美国，上次的我记得还有墨西呃墨西哥和这个 Russia， 这个俄罗斯，所以这几个国家大的国家没有变化，啊、呃，然后呢，但是有一点变重要的变化，就想提到就是在西欧的这些国家，法国、西班牙，包括德国和这个英国，上次在七月底的时候呢，他们是一个。是在一个，在一个非常好的趋势，就是过了，他们已经过了第一波的这个高潮，然后这个整个这个每天确诊病例数在往下走，已经达到了一个基本上维持一个比较低谷的状态，好像显示这个疫情基本上已经控制住的样子。但是呢，现在两个月之后呢，我们看现在这些国家，他们已经呃出现了，就像人们前段所谈到的第二波的高峰。啊，然后现在他们这个有些国家每天报告的这个新确诊病例数，甚至已经超过了第一波的最高点。And this is a daily confirmed death uh, again among the, those countries that select in 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 per paragraph, a uh, per, per figure. Um, and basically, we can see uh, the trend or the trend of the death kind of in line with daily confirmed cases. But one thing I want to note that. Also in these West, Euro West European countries, 
while their number of confirmed death also increasing and can align with the second wave on the uh, daily confirmed cases, but the number of death never surpassed the, the peak for the first wave. Um, Jilly, this is likely due to uh, the change in the demographic of the patient population and in the second wave, and most of them are generally younger uh, patients. Um, and we know for younger patients, the presentation of disease is generally milder and prognosis also better. Um, 这个图呢就是显示的是每天的这个因为跟新冠有关有关的死亡病例数基本上这个总体的趋势而言呢跟那个前面刚才那个图显示的新冠的新的确诊人数基本上相似但有一点呢我想想指出就是在修的这些国家
啊，用中文简单讲一下，这是讲这个美国现在的情况。上面是美国现在就是啊，按每天新新确诊病例数的一个趋势图，下面是每天死亡病例的一个死新冠病人死亡病例的一个趋势图。从上面我们可以看到非常典型的两个这个两个一个大的这个小小。大大规模的爆发吧，第一个就是在今年的三月份，然后呢，这个这个每天确诊病例，然后逐渐开始下降，然后在今年的夏天，大概就是七月份的左右的时候呢，有有一个很大的一个，呃，一个提升，然后呢，大概是在这个七月底，大概七月二十七号左右达到这个顶点，那时候呢，每天美国有七万四千例的这个新冠的病人确诊，然后呢，过了过了七月份以后呢，然后病病例数又开始逐渐的下降，嗯。啊、呃，到九月初的时候呢，又开始有一个小小的提升。那么现在呢，就上上上个周五的时候，我们现在美国是一天大概报告了有，啊、呃、五万五千例新的病人，啊、呃、啊，然后呢，这个呢基本上就是，嗯、呃，在八月十四号以后，进入九月份以后又是个又是个又是个最高的一个点，所所以说明这个疫情在进入九月份以后呢，又有了小的抬头。然后下面呢是这个呃死亡的病例数。啊，我们可也也可以看到，总体的趋势跟上面这个每天每每天新增病例数是差不多的，但是就是在第二波第二个这个高峰的时候，这个死亡病例数它远远没有达到第一次这个这个高峰的这个这个死亡病例的那个程度。主要原因呢，就像我刚才说的，一个。这个病人呢也比较年轻化。第二呢，当然，我们现在治疗的方案也更多。然后呢，就说这个，我们现在整个的医疗系统对这个这个病有有更多的了解，呃，也也做好了更多的准备。这些呢，都是都是可能的原因。Um, and then move into the California. And unfortunately, California right now already and ranked number one in the United States among all the 51 states in terms of number of tests being done and number of confirmed cases. Also, California ranked the number four in terms of the death due to COVID-19, as shown on, on, on the a, a, show by the finger on the top of this slide. And then look into the uh, every day, daily confirmed new cases. Um, uh, we can clearly see a summer surge, I mean, in, two, in July and August, and then look at the mortality, uh, the, the death due to COVID-19, the, the red finger on the bottom. So we can see a uh, mortality generally is lagging indicator, uh, last time I mentioned, uh, generally three to four weeks after your, we see spike in the new cases when we see the mortality start to increase. Again, mortality peaked at the end of July and then extended into August. So August so far has been the deadliest month for California in, with regard to the COVID-19. Um, and also um, moving into the uh, September, uh, while we are on the, uh, in terms of a newly confirmed cases, we are in the right tra trajectory and, but, and, and should be noted that and there has been a slight increase uh, with regard to newly confirmed cases and also ED visit due to COVID-19 and even hospitalization due to COVID-19 in California. Um, in 然后下面这个红色的图呢是死亡的病例，呃，死亡的这个这个这个趋势图。上上次我讲到了这个死亡，一般是就是说，呃，要比死死亡的这个这个发生呢，要比这个新确诊病例要大概落后三到四周。所以一般都是在新新确诊病例这个爆发的三到四周以后，我们才会看到死亡病例的升高。所以这里面也是这样子。所以你看这个死亡的这个病例的这个趋势呢，最高是在七月底。然后呢，然后逐渐延伸到八月份，啊、呃，八月份呢，在加州的这个这次这次这这个大疫情的历史上是死亡率最高的一个月，啊、呃，现在进入到九月份呢，呃，我们现在就是说，如果看到如果看这个全这个整个确新确诊病例的这个趋势的话。呃、uh, ，我们现在是一个比较好的一个态势，就是说，现在新确诊病例和这个，呃，住院的病例呢，都比最高峰的时候减少了一半都多。但是，我们要需要
警惕的就是，在最近的几天，加州这个总体的这个确诊的病例。然后那个住院的病例，还有因为这个新冠而到急诊室就诊的，这个又有又有抬升的趋势，这是我们需要注意的地方。And then move into the Mendocino County. Um, and this is by today. So far, we have 934 cases、uh, confirmed,、uh, which led to 18 deaths,、um, five in the hospital, three in the ICU. Uh, if you look at the、uh, characteristic of those confirmed cases, a majority of them are, come, are between age 19 to 50, 49 years old. I think close to 60 percent. And also Hispanic. Look at ethnicity. Hispanic count for close to 70 percent of the confirmed cases. Also, about and、uh, one third of the confirmed cases are due to community spread.、Um, and also.、Um, At the top, of this figure shows、uh, the color, which is a purple color.、Uh, if you're familiar with the uh, new um, tiered system and, and, and established by California, and Mendocino County is in the most restrictive tier. Basically,、uh, it's widespread in terms of、uh, disease status, pandemic status.、Um, uh, 这个呢，是我们现在这个。曼多西诺这个郡现在的情，这个这个疫情爆发的一个一个一个情况，啊，现在到今天为止啊，我们总共有九百三十四个确诊的病例，然后有其中十八例死亡，啊，有五例呢现在的住院，有三例呢是在 ICU， 啊，这个中间这个重症治疗病房。然后我看我们看这些确诊病例的这个年龄的分布呢，大概百分之六十。甚至更多都是在十九到四十九岁之间，都相对比较年轻的成年人。然后我们看一下这个种族的分布的话，就是西班牙裔大概占到了百分之七十左右，这是都是受比如受影响比较大的。嗯，然后我们看一下他们这个感染的这个来源的话呢，就是说这个 community spread 的社区感染呢，大概占到百分之四，就是三分之一左右。啊，然后你看这个这个这个 slide 最中间这个点，就是啊，是一个紫色的一个一个标标记。这个呢，就是我我们知道这个现在加州，啊，把所有的这个线呢，用这个每天呃发生病例的这个情况呢，呃，做一个归类的话，这个紫色的标记呢，就是说现在是疫情啊发展比较最严重的一个一个一个一个一个。呃，一个一个组群吧，一个标记，就是、说每天这个确诊的病例呢，超，呃。每十万人中间，每天确诊病例超过七例或者以上。现在我们现在啊，曼曼多西的抗体啊，仍然是在这个最严重的这个这一组中间。啊、uh, ，then this is also a a, a longitudinal shot of a Mendocino County with regard to the confirmed cases. Since number of deaths is very small,、um, so primarily. There's nothing that can be、uh, concluded there, but for the confirmed cases, clearly、uh, we see a similar trend for California. We see a peak in the summer, which is in in August, and then gradually come down, and and then start have a slightly uptick on in in early September,、um, in early September, and move into now. Um, this is for Men Mendocino County. Ah,、uh, 然后呢，我们看一下这个，就是从刚才呢，只是一个横断面的这个一个一个一个总结。现在看一下整个这个，呃、uh, ，longitudinal 就是长远性的一个一个总结的话，我们可以看到，呃、uh, ，基本上这个我们 Mendocino 这个郡的这个疫情的爆发跟加州是有点类似的，也是呢，就是呃， uh, 在今年的夏天八月份的时候，呃、uh, ，达到了最高峰，然后开始逐渐的下降，那么进入到九月份以后呢，又开始有一个小的回升这个状态。Um, this is a、uh, slide, and since we discuss a lot about you know school reopening, etc., and for example, in CTTP, school right now remain closed, but in Mendocino County,、um, there has been a school、uh, where、um, they and did their own assessment, determining that and、um, bring the students back to the classroom and is the best option for the students.
Um, this is one example at Ukiah Junior Academy. And I read this, this new newspaper on Ukiah Daily Journal uh, earlier this week. And they already reopened the school to the students. Of course, um, they only opened it to kindergarten to I think the sixth grade and not to every grade. Um, the, the decision was made because the leadership of the school think um, psychological well-being and educational um, benefits outweigh the COVID-19 risk to the students. So this is example of their classroom setting right now. And you can see the students are spaced out and a very small cohort. Um, and everyone wear the mask, including both students and the teacher. And also some teachers actually bring the initiative, bring the student to outdoors and whenever the temperature climb, um, admits. And this example, and they will give students yoga mats so we can then sit and, uh, and space in between each other and doing some homework outside the classroom. Um and so Tamana 然后呢，有的老师呢，就是在天气允许的情况下呢，就把学生啊带到室外去，啊，然后天气好的，好的时候呢，你看像这样像照片那样显示的，就是每人给大家发一个瑜伽的垫子，然后呢，学生呢可以
就明显要高居高于其他的这个其他的种族人群，就像这个右边这个图显示的一样，哎、呃，所以这也可能就是。这这也是解释这个为什么在非人群中间，啊、呃，这个疾病发生发生率和严重程度比较高的一个可能性的原因。And and then, um, of course, uh, for this disease, whether it can also be transmitted by airborne in the confined space, also a a, a important topic, but had never been determined. Right, we know this disease can be transmitted by droplets, and for the small droplets, which can flow. Float in air, whether that can be, and uh, can help transmit the disease with airflow is something uh, important to, to understand. Um, and this, this recent study actually provides some additional evidence to this um, potential air, airborne transmission of the virus. And this is based on study and from China actually, uh, but and from a study of 125 Buddhists in Zhejiang province. This is back in January and before the public awareness of the COVID-19. So they were divided into two buses and uh, they, they went to outdoor worship events and which about two hour tours, two hour away, two, two and a half hours and, and uh, right on the bus. And the bus is in the winter. So the bus is heated and so air, air condition is basically um, a close to recirculation of air on the bus. And one of us, there's one index patients and who experience the symptoms after return from the events. And the later, all the participants, of course, and, and underwent the, the, the COVID-19 testing. And one of interesting of interest, and what they found was in the bus where the, the index patients sit, and more than one third people later confirmed an infection by of COVID-19. But in another bus, and none of the cases confirmed COVID-19. And also what they found was in, in, among the passengers on the bus where the index cases sit, and the people get infected regardless of their proximity to the patient. So this is, again, uh, a, a uh, interesting uh, study, and as I mentioned, um, indicating a potential airborne transmission of the virus, especially in the coast and a space with recirculating uh, air. 啊，这个呢，就是说是这个空气的传播，就是我们这个疾病呢，就是大家都知道是通过这个小的这个这个这个颗粒，小的这个唾液颗粒和这个液体的颗粒。但如果这颗粒非常非常小的话，它有可能在会在空中悬浮，然后是不是这种悬浮的颗粒会随着空气的流动也传播这个疾病呢？这是一个大家比较关心的问题，但还没有一个非常确定的答案。然后最近的这个一个这方面一个比较有兴趣的这个一个一个研究，在这方面提供了一些啊、呃、提供一些辅助辅助的证据。这个是来自中国的一个研究，它是啊、呃、他们发现，在今年一月份的时候，就是全中全全国还没中国还没有这个啊、呃、怎么说呢？大家在公众场合下这个就是啊啊、呃呃、这个开始。提起这个疾病的时候，大家当时都没有戴口罩，然后这是一百二十五个佛教徒，他们坐在两分开两个大的大大大,大轿车上，然后去，然后乘坐了这个轿车去参加一个公众的集会，然后这个这个场所呢是在两个小时之外，所以他们就是一起在这个车上呢，大概在一起坐了两个多小时吧，嗯，然后其中一辆车呢，中间有一个病人，他从这个。这个集会之后回来以后就出现了症状，然后后来呢，当然这个疫情公布了以后呢，就是大大知道这疫情以后，所有所有的这个与会的人都参都都接受了检测，他们发现呢，就是在这个有病的人的这个车上呢，啊、呃，大概是六十七个人在一个车上，超过三分之一人后来证明都被感染了，而另外一个车上是没有一个人感染的，然后呢，在这个。啊、呃，在这个被感染的车上呢，他们发现，就是被感染的人，这个人呢，和这个真正最早有病的这个人，他们的座位座位是座位的距离啊、角度啊是没有任何规律的，嗯，所以就是说，这是也是一个非常有意思的这个研究，就就从另外一个角度来辅助的证明。这个病毒有可能在这个，尤其是在这个密闭的环境下，尤其是在是跟外面没有通风接触的环境下，就是通过这个空气传播是非常有可能的。Um, and uh, 
this is a, not a study, right? We talk, always talk about the school reopening and we focus on the risk for the kids. And, but I thought this is a study interesting. Um, I was uh, study, look at, look at it from another perspective. And was associated with the school opening and these are the children's risks. How about the, and people around the children who are teaching the children who care for them. How about the teacher and their parents who care, care, to, care to children? What's their risk for the potential severe COVID-19? And so this is a study based on a national um, health survey and, and published in 2018 in the US. So they, they look into all known risk factors for COVID-19. And they identify patients have people, not patients, people have a definite or possible risk factor for severe COVID-19. What they found was among the teacher, more than 50% actually have and meet this category, have possible, definite possible risk factor for severe COVID-19 and for adults and living with the school age children and more than 50% there as well. And, and also they found um, and, uh, and lower income household generally have, even have a higher um, proportion of adults and uh, having the risk factors. And also the report the most common risk factors with BMI, obesity, and also hypertension. I think BMI is about more than 30%. Um, and this is another one I think is quite interesting, is that everyone usually thinks about this. 把学校重新开放的多少想的，对我们对我们学生有什么呃影响啊危险啊？但是我觉得这个这个这个研究就是想要从另外一个角度，就是一旦学生感染了，他会把他他是会把把病毒传播给周围的一些呃成年人，比如说他们的老师或者他们回回家以后他们的家长。那么在这些老师家长中间，有多少人是一旦感染这个病毒，有有可能会呃变成比较严重的这个这个这个新冠新冠肺炎？就出现比较严重的新冠肺炎，我们现在已经知道呢，就是说，成年人中间啊，他们啊如果具备了一些啊危险因素的，比如说有些慢性疾病的话，他们将来得这个严重新冠肺炎的可能性会比较大。然后这个研究呢，就发现在这个老师中间呢，啊。就超过，这是在美国做的这个研究，就超过百分之五十的这个这个成年人。And 都都具备这个，呃，严重新冠肺炎的危险因素，就都具备一些慢性疾病的特征。然后在这个，呃，这个学生的这个家长中间呢，有百分之五十四的家长也都具备这个严重新冠肺炎的危险因素。然后他们也发现，就是这些这个学生的这个家庭条件越困难，那他们这个家家里面这个家长具备这个风险因素的比例就越高，而且最。最常见的这个风险就是高危因素呢，就是这个过度肥胖，然后这个那个高血压。嗯、um, ，This is another study um and demonstrating and impact on social distance on the not only the COVID-19 but other infectious diseases in children. Um, I think this is based on a network of primary care uh, network in Massachusetts it covers uh, close to 350,000 um, pediatric patients uh, and, and pediatric, pediatric patients, a pretty large network. Uh, so the, uh, the yellow line is um, in 2020, uh, this move into the COVID-19 where after the social, uh, social distance, especially right, the, where you see the green column that indicating social distance started. Right, so basically you can see compared to before, after, for after the social distance and also compared 2020 and 2019, clearly see almost all 12 um, diseases, infectious diseases in children are reduced after the after social distance and put in place. And one, one thing interesting to note is the last one, the UTI, uh, urinary tract infection, which is not a con com communicable disease, and but also get reduced a little bit. And what that indicating is not a impact social distance, but more of a reluctance of the parents and bring their and children to the uh, healthcare setting, right? So, um, and, uh, and that also and, and, and indicating a potential warning sign that for children who children may be missing their vaccination schedule and then potentially uh, increase on their risk for other important infections such as measles. Um, 这个呢是另外另外一个比较有兴趣的研究，就是看这个现在这个呃保持社交距离。
不光呢，这这个这个是呃是在呃麻麻省在一个很大的一个儿科这个呃儿科的这个呃社区里面做的，大大概这个这个社区里面呢啊、呃，包括了大概三十三十七万这个这个儿科的，就是儿童吧。啊，然后呢是一个相比较相对比较大的人群，然后他们就是研究，在实行了这个社交距离 （social distancing） 之外，啊，之前或之后对这些儿科常见的传染病有什么影响？啊，这里面你可以看到这个蓝色的线呢是二零一九年，黄色线是二零二零年。二零二零年呢，这个灰色的这个柱子呢，就是说这个什么时候 social distancing 开始实施的？我可以发现就是在二零二零年之前实行的这个 social distancing 之前或者之后，然后同比二零一九年。基本上，这所有的十二种这个常见的这个传染传染性疾病呢，都有下降。当然，下降的最明显是前面十一种，在最后一种呢，就是这个尿道尿路的感染。其实尿路感染它不是一种传染病，但是它也有略有下降。你看这个黄色的线和和这个绿色线的比较，啊、呃，这个呢就是说明，实际上这个这肯定不是 social distance 的作用，而是在疫情发生了以后，家长一般，呃，可能碰到小病就比较就比较不不比较不愿意带孩子去。去去这个医院里面看大夫，呃，这也呢是，啊、呃，一个比较重要的一个线索，就是说，因为这里面很多都是儿童，他们要定期到这个这儿科门诊里面去，啊、呃，接受疫苗，所以像这样的出现这种现象，是不是对这个疫苗的这个也有影响？如果只是这样的话，那么这个儿科在儿童中间其他的急性的传染病也可能会有影响。Um, and very quickly go through the immunity, right? So, and this is a new virus, and and uh, we're still in, in f find out, f figuring out. And once the people recover from this uh, virus, and generally when virus get into the body, how the human immune system uh, fight against the virus once they recover, and uh, and what is the likelihood um, people. You know, can be protect from other infections. If so, how long? So this is important. Uh, I thought it's interesting study and uh, looking into people recovered and uh, from COVID nineteen and looking into their and uh, neutralizing an antibody. What they found was actually the disease severity is closely related to the level neutral neutralized antibody. And people who have who are really severe, for example, also have moderate severity, and they have. Pretty more significant uh, and neutralized antibody once they recover from disease, and which in the neutralizing assay they indicating they can reduce viral RNA fold much more significantly than patients who have only mild symptoms or asymptomatic. And this is another one. Is um, in below, I will talk about we face this new virus, this new virus, our body's immune system. 到底是一般什么样怎么样的一种反应？然后病人恢复了以后，啊、呃，就说我们现在免疫系统是不是足以保护这个病人？啊、呃，这样他们不会重新出现感染。如果是这样的话，那么大概是什么样的一个保护程度？有什么决定因素？呃，来来来,来决定这个病人的这个保护的这个水平？啊、呃，这个呢是最近发呃这个发表的一个研究。他就发现，这个疾病的严重程度，一旦病人恢复了，这个恢复了，恢复正常以后，这个他所经历的疾病的严重程度和他们这个，啊、呃，免疫系统的这个综合性抗体的水平是非常关有关的。我们知道，中性抗体越高，那么这个对病人的保将来的保护能力就越强。这里面就是说，我们就看到最左面的这个，呃，红色和粉色的。这两这两类病人，就是他们的经历的疾病的严重程度比较都比较高，比较严重的。他们一旦恢复了以后，他们这个中和抗体水平都非常的高，明显高于那些，呃，轻度症状或没有症状的病人。Um, then this one also shows, besides a intrans antibody, this also shows a cellular immune response and CD4 CD T cell response, and also um, increase. Um, also be a, a, a be also a stronger among the patients who recovered from the severe diseases right and uh, that's where you see um highlight here is our severe cases and highlight here are the milder cases so you see we have the strength of t-cell response is higher for severe cases and number of viral epitopes recognized by t-cells also more Definitely more in the severe cases there as well. So this is also talking about from another angle. Aside from the T-cell immunity, and then the cell immunity, this is also what determines the future of the human being. If the virus is not infected, the future of the human being is the determining factor. How is the cell immunity strength? This is also important. 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 This is also important.
。这个研究也发现，这个如果这个病人啊得的是比较严重的疾病，他一旦恢复以后，他这个细胞免疫的程度也是明显要高于那些啊这个只是轻度感染的病人。And this is another important study. Also shows while the antibody may be decreasing over time. Look at on the B shows here. Antibody generally neutral antibody and decrease over time after disease onset, but the memory T cells, memory B cells, actually remain constant. So this indicating their potentially longer term protection for people who recovered from this disease. While their antibody decreased, but their memory T cell actually uh, and maintains. Uh, 这是另外一个角度，就是说，虽然我们现在很多研究就发现，这个病例但从这个得了新冠然后感染恢复以后，他们。这个身体可以检测到的这个综合性抗体呢，随着时间会越来越来越低，越来越越来越低，这个水平越来越低。但是我们身体里面有一个记忆型的这个免疫，这个记忆型免疫就是它，就是说在将来如果再感染这类似的病毒的时候，记记忆型免疫就会可以非常快速的启动，然后然后在短时间。呃，制造大量的这个抗体，然后这个对抗这个病毒，这个 G 型的免疫呢，它这个 B 细胞呢，实际上实际上是保持在一个保持在一个比较相对恒定的水平，这说明我们这个有这个可能啊。现在当只是细胞的水平，有这可能就是，即便这个病人啊、呃、感染这个恢复恢复了以后，它的抗体水平再往下降，但是它这个体内的这个 G G 型的这个 B 细胞啊仍然在起作用。Um, of course, um, and um, for people who are interested in, and they have been looking for this, and they found the first case and for in, in the inf re reinfection case in the world, which is a, a guy from Hong Kong, a man, 33 year old, and, and first diagnosed in late March and was only mildly symptomatic, and and two negative tests in April. And there's no antibody after the infection, and then mid of August, this this person tests positive again, and in UK, and this time, and this this person is asymptomatic. So the genetic sequencing of virus from first to second indicating there's significant difference. So this support this guy, this person is infected twice by different virus strain. 啊，这是呢，这是当然这个呃。病人感染新冠会不会重新感染？这是大家一直比较感兴趣的问题。然后最近呢，就是我们终于有这个第一个病例报道，这是在香港发现的一个三十三岁的年轻人啊，他在三月份的时候第一次诊断。然后当时他是只有轻度的症状，然后四月份的时候呢，就是两次检测都是阴性的，然后他这个恢复以后呢，这个体内也没有什么抗体的水平，啊，然后在八月中旬的时候，他在英国的又接受一次检测，这次呢啊是又检测阳性，然后呢，但是这次呢没有症状，然后呢做了一些基因的分析，发现，呃，他两次这个感染的这个病毒呢之间区别很大，所以这这支持他是应该是被感染了两次。Uh, then this also the first case in the United States and the, the person from Nevada and and first in fact in April and the only mild cases um, then later have two negative uh, tests in May and become ill again and this time and become more severe diseases and test positive and also gen uh, genomic analysis support there are two different infections and this is the first case of the first case in the United States 啊，这个这个这个男的呢是四月份感染的，然后当时只是个轻度轻度的症状，后面有两次阴性的检测，然后到五月底的时候呢，这个人就病了。这次呢，他他的症状呢相对比较严重，啊，然后检测是阳性的，然后基因的检测证明两两次病毒株是不一样的。啊、um, ，so there are key questions for reinfections and need to be asked, and so far we don't have answer for something. And uh, we'll, we'll be looking to um, in the future how common this reinfection, right? So we don't know that, but we know for other seasonal coronavirus and co-infection can be reinfection can be frequent after tw twelve months, and and so also for the COVID nineteen, our infection journey become more or less severe, and given all the immune response that we just mentioned, right? People uh, and potentially long-lasting cellular immune response and memory B cell response. The third is what implication infection reinfection means for the vaccine right development. Ah, uh, 当然这个里面就是说从。
，既然现在发现了这个重庆感染了，那么就是有几个关键的问题，现在还没有答案。但是我们，我相信在不久的将来，我会有很多这方面的信息出来。第一就是这个重庆感染这个这个是多常见的一个现象。我们知道在其他这个季节性的这个冠状病毒，这个重庆感染是非常常见的，尤其是在啊、呃、第四感染十二月之后，我们的这个体验的免疫系统慢慢都都开都是都是消亡的时候，这个重庆感染是非常常见的。那对这个。现在我们这个新冠病毒是个新的病毒，那么重庆感染是多常见？我们不知道。第二呢，就是重庆感染以后，这个第二次感染以后，病人这个疾病的严重程度是比以前更重呢，还是更轻呢？就像我们刚才讲了，这个确实感染的这个新冠以后呢，我们体内会有一些比较已经有一些免疫反应，就像我刚才说的 G 型的 B 细胞呀，包括像这个细胞免疫啊，这些都是呃。可以长远，可以可以相对比较长期存在的。那如果存在这种现象的话，那再有重庆感染，这个严重程度是不是会降低？这也是一个问题。第三个问题就是重庆感染对这我们现在疫苗的开发有什么有什么影响？什么价值？这也是一个非常严非常重要的问题。Um, and the next couple of slides, I just want to mention this become more and more important uh, issue that people start pay attention to is impact the pandemic on the people's mental health, right? Psychological. Uh, well-being. So this is a, a survey uh, conducted late June, and what they found among over 5,000 respondents this is in the U.S. and over 40 percent people reported they had some adverse mental behavior issues related to the COVID-19, and and 11 percent responders said they seriously considered suicide in the last three days, right? And the the percentage even higher among certain age groups, and also among people who are already been stressed for other reasons. For example, people who are taking care of a, a, um, fam a sick family members. And 下一个呢，我就想非常简短简单说一下，这是个越来越重要的一个社会现象。大家现在开始越来越重视这个问题，就是啊，这个心理的心理的影响。啊，这是一个呃，在比较大的一个调查，这是在美国做的，呃，在六月底的时候做，他们。超过五千五百人，这个调查发现，百分之四十的人啊、呃、都说这个新冠、新冠、新冠这个呃疾病的疾病对他们这个心理或者是行为方面都有一些负面的影响。然后超过百分之十一，就大概百分之十一的人就说，真比较严肃的考虑过这个自杀的问题啊、呃。然后呢，这个比例实际上在有一些就比较年轻的人间，十八到二十四岁的比例更高。嗯、呃，然后在一些就是已经有一些其他啊啊。呃呃其他焦虑因素的这个人群中间呢，这个比例也会也更高。比如说，有些人他家里面就是照顾这些比较急，就就有病的这个家人的这些人，啊、呃，这些人他们中间这个自杀的倾向更高。And, and then this is another survey on among 1,400 the U.S. residents, U.S. residents, and they they're looking to and depression related to the symptoms and what they found actually there are threefold increase before and after the COVID-19, which is across all so, social and demographic demographic factors. Um, and before and COVID-19, and only eight percent, nine percent people reported have depression symptoms, and during the COVID-19, close to twenty-eight percent reporting have a depression symptoms, and here you can see uh, basically, and uh, this is the blue bar is higher than the yellow bar and most all social economic levels. And this is another study, which is in 1,400 American people, and they did a study, and found that after the coronavirus appeared, they have the Um, and also, and a similar survey also shows the increase on the depression actually, uh, and, and also at all severity level, right? Even the more severe the symptoms, actually the relative increase is more significant. And this slide is saying that the depression and 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 the depression. Okay, um, last, I think uh, a couple minutes I'd like to um, 
report something about the vaccine. And this is uh, a New York Times vaccine tracker. I think it's a really good uh, resource for people who are interested in. Uh, I strongly recommend you take a look at it. Uh,下面几分钟时间，我给大家讲讲呃疫苗最近的发展情况，有很多呃就是大家讨论现在比较热衷的一个问题。然后这是呢，《纽约时报》的这个，它有一个有一个专专业就专门讲这个疫苗的
efficacy is sixty percent. Ah, 就是说，简单的中文说，这个呢，就是讲的这个疫苗在这个动实验中间啊，展示的非常非常这个让人印象深刻的这种效果。然后呢，在人体这个前期的人体实验中间，他们在这个老年人中间也展示了非常不错的这个这个保护效果。对这个新冠新冠疾病来讲，这是非常有意义的，因为我们知道这个老年人是相对这个这个发展严重疾病这个危险风险都比较高的一个人群。然后呢，三期临床呢，他现在基本上就是三万人，然后呢，每人接受两次的注射。然后他现在就是说啊、呃，希望达到的预期指标就是我们疫苗可以保护这个百分之六十的人群。啊，他现在预期的效预期的时间呢，就是在今年的年底或者明年年初，可以把这个三期实验的效结果拿出来。呃，第二，呃 ，the second one is also mRNA vaccine developed by Pfizer, and this is probably President Trump and 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 the talk a lot about recently. So something just let you know, probably you want to know. And this is also the vaccine developed by a German company, Biotech, and also a Chinese company, Fosun Pharma, and. But usually you don't hear you don't hear the Chinese for a, a com company name, so um, and this vaccine was was not the front runner, but really catching up very quickly. So they they launched their first phase one two trial in May, um, and and they showed the promising effects, and and then in July they quickly think about if it may phase one trial, phase one. Phase one trial launched in May, and then July they launched a phase two and three trial. Already, this is in thirty thousand volunteers in the U.S. and other other countries as well. In September, and they also announced to expand the U.S. trial to forty three thousand participants. Basically, they want to use the trial to to register, right, to prove this vaccine, and also and U.S. government. And seeing and, and seeing this the promise of the prospects of this vaccine awarded one point. Nine billion dollar contract, and to Pfizer, and and if they can deliver a, a prove this vaccine effective and deliver 100 million doses by December, and also U.S. government want to have option to acquire additional 500 million doses, and if that happens, and Japanese government also want to have another 120 million, and, and European Union also want also purchase 200 million doses if vaccine turn to be effective. So the CEO Pfizer, Pambi, you you read in on the news said that they may know whether the vaccine works as soon as October, and that's where the, uh, President Trump mentioned this vaccine, and this become a right now really become the front runner now, um, um, and of course uh, the Pfizer also expect to manufacture and to 1.3 billion if the target be effective sometime next year. 呃，这是另外一个，就是也是美国这边就是研发的 mRNA 的疫苗，就都是比较新的技术啊。这个是跟这个呃德国的一个公司，还有中国的一个公司一起合作研发的。然后这个疫苗呢，就是说开始人人体临床实验是比较晚的，但是它的进展非常的迅速。五月份才开始第一第一开始一期的一期的临床，然后这么效果不错以后，七月份就开始了二三期的临床，同时开二四二三期，它全部就合在一起了，就不严格划分二期三期了。然后它现在计划要就是当时计划就是啊啊、呃呃、就是接种三万个三万个这个志愿者，主要在美国其还有一些其他的这个呃。其他的国家也做，但是呢，在九月份的时候，这个公司就把这个这个三这个临床试验的规模扩大了。现在计划要在美国就要接种四万三千例病，四万三千例这个志愿者。然后美国的政府呢，看到这个疫苗的希望以后呢，就是啊，九、呃、月份呢，给他提供了十九亿的这个美金的这个合同，啊、呃，就说如果这个。这个公 Pfizer 能够在今年十二月份啊就提供，就证明这个疫苗有效，同时提供这个一亿粒这个剂量的话，然后呢，美国政府还要求，还希望将来能够获得这个，呃，继继继续购买啊五亿粒这个剂量的这个所有权。然后日本政府还有包括现在的欧盟，都都都都从他这个地方买，都都从 Pfizer 买这个疫苗。啊，然后呢，这个 Pfizer 的这个 CEO 也说，他们有可能在十月十月份的时候就知道这个疫苗的三期到底是不是效果是效果是怎么样的。啊，这就是啊，现在现在可能走的比较最靠前的一个疫苗吧。啊 ，And then there are a couple of other vector, uh, viral vector based vaccine, and this this one I just uh, Dr. Master Young, should I stop here or? 
I don't know. Um, How much time do you need to talk about this one, <laughs> Oxford? Uh, maybe uh, this one and this one too. Can can I have a two, or three, three more minutes? Okay. 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 I'll, I'll be quick. So this one and people should know, right? This one used to be the front runner, really. Um, AstraZeneca and and also code developed by University of Oxford. It's based on chimpanzee adenovirus, um, and uh, and they. They started early uh, and they showed a good effect in an animal model and, uh, and therefore US government awarded $1.2 billion contract in May to support continued development. And the phase one and two also showed safety is okay and, uh, um, and efficacy was really uh, looks good. So they moved into phase two and three in England, India um, and, and, uh, and phase three in, in Brazil and US as well. Um, in August, and the European Union and a reach agreement to, to buy 400 million doses if positive, try to turn to be positive. Unfortunately, and AZ AstraZeneca actually also, even in the meantime, expanded the manufacturer scale, and they plan to deliver emergency vaccine as early as October if anticipating that a phase three trial will be going to be effective. And, but unfortunately, in earlier September, early this month, and they, they halted the global trial for the vaccine because of, uh, in one volunteers, it developed a transverse myelitis, which is a serious adverse events. And six, six days later, and the British government and the Brazilian government allowed them to resume the trial, but in the United States, and the trial still be on hold. And, and reading the newspaper, um, and New York Times had recently had a good, good paper. They, they requested, I think, and, and with the public demand that the company uh, disclose more information, they turn out not only have one volunteer developed and transferred my life, but actually this is the second case already. So they, in July, they already have one volunteer developed a transfer myelitis, and they dismissed that case because and they, they claim that that, one, that volunteer already have underlying risk for multiple sclerosis. And for patients who have multiple sclerosis, an early sign is similar to the transfer myelitis. So, and using that, they, they think that case is, is not associated with the vaccine. And this in September, this is second case. Uh, and that's, that might be the reason why FDA still and hasn't allowed them to resume the trial in the US, but we don't have further detail. We'll see how these things will develop. Uh, 然后早期的一切进展都很顺利 Asanica把全球的这个临床实验都停了，因为当时呢有一例这个受试者呢出现了比较这个比较严重的这个副反应，就是这个横向脊髓炎。呃，然后呢，但是六天之后呢，英国的这个英国政府和现在包括巴西政
we trigger a lot of discussion because this is, you know, there, there's no phase three trial yet. And how, how, how a vaccine can be approved without phase three. And later they change that it's a conditional approval. And, and, uh, and so also uh, recently uh, they, they published their phase one, two study results. And this is based on only 76 volunteers, very small study. And, but at least they, they show, and for both formulation, the, the, the vaccine and demonstrate the efficacy and acceptable safety. And in mind, would you,这个现状病毒的这个载体的做载体的疫苗，然后这是前段时间可能媒体讨论比较多的，就是俄罗斯开发的疫苗。然后呢，现在这个疫苗一切二期的这个结果也出来了，但这一切二期实际上只有七十六
vaccine going to be effective? Because now it seems like they have different kind of strains of vector uh, viruses around, right? Yeah, um, and, and someone already, yeah, it, that's a very good question, it's really relevant, right? Um, there has been a researcher looking to and different strains, especially uh, most re recent uh, mutant strain, uh, have I think six, three, four mutation, right? Last time I mentioned that. And that's the virus strain become predominant after the March and from global pandemic perspective. And so because of mutation exactly on the spike protein, which is, you know, the protein and virus uh, bind to the ACE2 receptor. So there's question, you know, if you have a mutation on that protein, that could and all the earlier vaccine developed based on previous strain, was that going to have impact on how in the vaccine will be effective against this new strain? And their most recent uh, study look into that, and uh, what they found is no, and uh, doesn't seem like this new strain and uh, have any impact on the um, immunity and to the COVID-19. So that's kind of feel reassured and at least for now, right, based on what we know about and, and mutant and, and, and mutation of the virus for now. But whether that in the future, maybe there's other uh, mutant strain come up, then potentially can escape and uh, immunity triggered by, by vaccine, that is possible, uh, but we don't know for sure yet. Can, can you say this quickly in Chinese? Uh, 就是, 这个, um, 永远是问了一个问题，就是说现在疫苗也在突变。那么现在我们疫苗，呃，现在这个病毒也在突变。那我们现在疫苗研发的疫苗出来以后，是不是呃，因为到时候这个病毒突变以后，我们疫苗就不
，因为这个最近那个政政治原因的政治因素的这个在里面，在里面的这个起到的起到的一些影响吧，大家对这个疫苗的这个信心呢，确实有一定的下降。啊，现在呢，就是说啊，因为现在最近有几方面的这方面努力，第一就是所有的这个疫苗的生产厂家，九个全球的生产主要的是疫苗生产厂家，他们在一起啊，就是在公开的，就是做了这个表态，他们要在疫苗自己的疫苗生产空间，他们要就是用。最严格的这个伦理和科学的标准来要求，如果他们的产品没有达到这个既既既安全又有效的情况下，他们是绝对不会递交到 FT 去审批的，这是第一点。第二呢，就是 FD 呢现在也是非常的明确 ，FD 的这个 Commissioner 这个也非常明确，他们绝对不会在虽然是是公众的要求，虽然有有政治的压力，但是他们绝对不会在疫苗这个审批方面有任何的这个，呃偷工减料的行为。第三呢，我就想说一点，就是现在美国。已经有几个州，包括加州在内，他们已经明确的表示，他们州呢要自己做一些独立的这个，要自己做独立的这个评评估，啊、呃，这个加州的这个这个。这个州政府建卫生署的这个头他已经说了，我们加州要成立一个自己的专家委员会来评审这个疫苗，然后再决定到底哪个疫苗是真正有效、真正有有,有安全的。所以，有不就几种不同层次的把关。所以我觉得这个问题呢，就说是个非常好的问题，但我觉得可能不用太担心。就是，当然，就金老师刚才又接着问，就是在我们可能也是没有选择。我说说在今年年底之前，我们选择是有限的，啊，但是到明年年初的时候，有可能就是我们会有。确实有不同的选择。嗯。Okay, I think、uh, we are run out of time. I'm sure people have other questions. Please send your question later. Maybe you can we can use email to ask、uh, Doctor Chen Wang. And、uh, if you don't have his email address, you can send it to me. I'll forward. And、uh, otherwise, we have to wait for. Another four weeks for the next talk. <laughs>、uh, so the next one will be Dr. Funding Wang is going to to talk.、Mm. So this. So next week actually is the.、Uh, Uh, Zhang Chiu, Mr. Zhang Chiu, will give us a brief introduction to the status of the WeB, the East Campus project. 下礼拜天是朱建和居士，要和我们报告是东区那个要学佛教学院工程的进度。那接下来的话就是黄明禄医师 ，This is Dr. Minglu Huang from USC. He's going to share his Um, what you learn from the dental master, and after that is Dr. Qin Yuan Gui and Mr. Danny Yan. They are going to share with us what they experience in teaching and learning in the pandemic. Ah, ah. Next is Huang Minlu Yi Shi, and then is ah, this is Guo Qingyuan and ah, Bo Shi, and Danny Yan. These two. 呃，老师他们和我们分享他们在目前教和学的的经验。那接下来 ，then， 嗯 ，then will be Doctor Han Bing Wang is going to give us another update. So you know that、uh, at the end of the next month there is another update. 那接下来的话就是到了呃十月底的时候，王文斌医师会再给我们做一个。Uh, uh, so that's pretty much it, and uh, thank you everyone for your participation. And we are dedicated married. We just come to the I think people can just sit. You don't need to stand. <coughs> we will train this in English. Everyone can sit. 我们用中文来尝尝这个回相机，那英文，对不起。Merry marriage from the spreaders, but all the goodness we pay the kindness from above and raise your dosing head below. 